Okay, so in this video I'm going to take a look at the SUVAT equations and focus specifically on where the equations come from, so how we actually get the equations in the first place. And I'm going to do it using some of the properties of motion I've looked at in previous videos. So by the end of this video what I'm looking to try to do you should be able to know when you're allowed to apply, apply the SUVAT equations, so there are some times where they're not appropriate. Uh, we need to know what the different symbols su uh, are in the equations. So the reason they're called SUVAT equations is because we use the letters S, U, V, A, and T as part of them. And then what I want you to, to do at the end is be able to explain how we actually got the equations. So I'm going to take you through that, but at the end you should also be able to explain how it works. Okay. So, in terms of when we can apply the SUVAT equations, they are designed specifically for scenarios where the acceleration of an object is constant. So an example of this might be when an object is in free fall, for example, so it's acted only on by its weight force. Um, in terms of some circumstances where it's not appropriate, if we're dealing with things like air resistance, um, this would not be appropriate because acceleration changes with air resistance. So we can only apply these when acceleration is constant. And there are enough of those scenarios that it makes SUVAT equations useful because they provide a straightforward way of modeling the system. Okay, so if acceleration is constant, we know that our acceleration versus time graph is going to look like this one. So acceleration is the same for all times. So we can see that there. Okay, so now let's link in our other properties of motion based on the acceleration looking like this. So, you should know from looking at the properties of motion videos or from your own learning that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity or the change in velocity divided by the time it takes or the gradient of a velocity versus time graph. There are different ways of expressing that. So what we can do is we can rearrange to make it in this form. So we can say the change in velocity is acceleration times the time for which it experienced that acceleration. So we're going to rearrange it to this form. So what that indicates to us is if we want to know how much the velocity of an object changes, what we need to do is find the area under a acceleration versus time graph. So you can see that in yellow there. We're looking at this specific period of time and this acceleration it experienced. So, in terms of um, what we're looking at, um, we are in SUVAT equations going to, instead of writing dt all the time, we're just going to write t, but t stands for the change in time or the amount of time that is passed. Um, so just note that from now on. So if what we do is write this as dv was a times t. Okay, so if we do that, so we use t instead of dt, we get this expression here. So we know the change in velocity is acceleration times the time for which it was accelerating. So let's introduce some more symbols now. v is the final velocity of an object, and u is the initial velocity. So u would be the velocity just before it started accelerating, and v would be the velocity after it started accelerating. So our change in velocity, therefore, is v minus u, or final minus the initial. So what we can do is we get this equation here. So v minus u is equal to at, and the form you usually see it in is in v equals u plus at. So that's our first SUVAT equation. It allows us to calculate the final velocity if we know the initial velocity, the acceleration, and the time for which it was accelerating. So that's our first SUVAT equation. Okay, so to, to get our second SUVAT equation, we're going to use another of our definitions. So you should know that velocity is the rate of change of displacement, or velocity is the gradient of a displacement versus time graph. Just like we did before, we're going to rearrange that. So the change in the displacement of an object is going to be the velocity multiplied by the time at which it was at that velocity. That's what we've got here. So what that means is, if we want to know the change in displacement, we need the area under a velocity versus time graph there. So we need that area in yellow shown there. So just like we did before for time, in SUVAT equations, we use the symbol S 
for the change in displacement. So instead of ds in Seebeck equations, you'll just see s, which stands for change in displacement there. So let's use that. So let's work out what the area under our graph is equal to. So you can see I've split it up into a rectangle and a triangle. So the rectangle, you can see, has area of u times t. So that's where this u times t comes from. This triangle has half base times height is the area, so half times t times by v minus u is the height of the triangle. So that's what we've got there. I've then multiplied out the brackets to get this expression here. And then what I've done is I've then taken this ut, subtracted half ut, and we end up with this half bt minus half ut. Well, notice there's a t in both of these expressions, and there's a half in both of these expressions. So we factorise that, and we end up with this equation right here, which is the second Subac equation that we have encountered there. So s, change in displacement, u, initial velocity, and v, final velocity, and t is time there. Okay, so that is our second Subac equation. Let's look at how we can get the other Subac equations. There's two more we're going to look at. So we are still using our velocity versus time graph that we were using um, just now. Um, but what we're going to do is use what's called a substitution method to generate our next equation. So we saw from the previous slide, we can express the area as this equation here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our first Subat equation, v equals u plus at, or v minus u is equal to at in place of that. So we see we've got v minus u here, so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in at for v minus u, and we end up with the area is ut plus half at squared. We know the area is the change in displacement, so we end up with our third Subat equation right here, s equals ut plus half at squared as our third equation there. And we've done that by using what's called a substitution method there. So we put this into that expression there. Okay, so that's our third equation. So to get our fourth equation, again, we're going to use substitution. So we're going to use the first two Subat equations to give us another one. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to rearrange this equation to make t the subject. So that's what we've got here. And I've also slightly modified this one to make it v minus u equals at. If you want to pause this video and check that that's a rearrangement, please do so. Um, but if not, we can carry on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in t into this equation here. So that's what I've done here. So we've got v minus u is equal to 2as over u plus v. So this should be an equal sign. I'm not sure why that's a plus sign on there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the u plus v to the other side. So you can see that we've got it there. And then I'm going to multiply out those brackets and we end up with v squared minus u squared equals 2as or v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So we've not really been using the graphs anymore, we've just been using a substitution method to do this. Um, I would highly recommend stopping and checking this for yourself so you see how it works. Um, but this is our fourth equation that we are going to look at. So that finishes the uh, four derivations I'm going to show you today. There is a fifth Subat equation that I'm not going to tell you about, so I'll leave that to you as a challenge to have a go. See if you can figure out what the fifth Subat equation is. Um, to give you a clue, it doesn't have the initial speed of the object in it, okay? So, so far, all the equations have always had one thing missing from them, but we haven't had one with u missing yet, so that's the fifth equation, but I'll leave you to try and find out what that is. Okay, so, let's just review what you should know at this point. Um, hopefully, you can now tell me when we can apply Subat equations. You should know what the different symbols mean. So, S, for example, stands for change in displacement, for instance, or T stands for change in time. And you should be able to explain how we got those four equations, and as a bonus, um, if you can explain where the fifth one comes from, that's awesome. Um, so, 
Following this video, I'm going to show you the same process but using calculus, which you'll be learning in A level math. So, in the next video, if you're interested, I'll show you how we do these derivations using calculus. Um, but that's not part of the A level physics course, so don't worry if you don't understand what's going on with that video. Okay.